we're going to chat a little bit about some real world finances. I'm going to jump into it. Oh, awesome. I love finances. What do you think is a, a good credit score? Um, uh, couldn't tell you. A couple hundred. A couple hundred? A million. A million. A couple hundred million. <laughs> Right on, oh, man. The higher you go, the worse, right? The worse, yeah. No, no, no. The higher you go, the better. The higher. Do you know what a credit score is? I know everyone has a credit score because it's based on your credit. I think they're low, like 20. 20 would be a good credit score. Yeah, I think so. Is that way off? Uh, so, it's so far off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought so. Over 700. No, that's not good. No, no. <laughs> Does it make any sense that you can get a couple degrees or a major and a minor and then not get hired because you have a bad credit score? No, that's crazy. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you won't be able to get a, an apartment or utilities or even your insurance now. Your insurance rate are all dependent on having a good credit score. Did you know that? No, I'm learning something new today, so this is good. <laughs> now, what is the interest rate on your credit card? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My mom just told me, if you use this thing, you better pay it off. So that's what I do. 5 to 10%. What if I told you that the average student pays about 15% on their, their credit cards? That sucks. Doesn't that suck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. See, I don't know. I just know I want it to be low. Low interest rate. But you have no idea what low would be on your credit card? Nope. <laughs> so I need to ask someone like you. So you're going to end up having to make some decisions on your student loans. Do you feel prepared on being able to pick up the right student loans? No, I don't. Is it subsidized or unsubsidized? Unsubsidized. What's that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> What's the number one factor to actually be able to consolidate your student loans? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> Did you know it was your credit score? Oh, no. Did you ever learn about any of this stuff that I'm talking about, like your credit cards or your credit score when you were in high school or from your parents? No, I didn't learn any of that in high school. Have you learned any of this stuff that we're talking about right now in college? No, I haven't. Would you like to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are kind of not thinking about it and hoping it'll go away by the time we graduate, but it's not going to work. <laughs> and well, if I brought this thing into this campus here and I talked about real world finances, would you go and hit it up? I, I honestly would. It'd be beneficial to you? Yeah. That would be helpful. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> definitely, because my parents assume that I know a lot of it already and I don't really know any. So, yeah, I would definitely use that. I would absolutely love that. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm absolutely going to be coming back here to give you one. So you're, you're going to be there, right? I will be there. Yes. <laughs> Before we started talking, what did you think your comfort level was with personal finances on a scale from one to ten? Two. Now, where do you think you are? Four. So the higher is the better. So you're feeling a little bit better. Yes, that's like credit. The higher, the better. Look right. at that. I just, maybe six. I went to six. Learning in action. If I could bring a program into school that talked about real world understanding of these four topics that we just talked about, would you think that would be a beneficial thing and make you extremely comfortable to be able to make the right decisions? Yeah, yeah, it would. I started all in education because I watched too many of my friends in their 20s drop out of school, ruin relationships, ruin careers, ruin their credit, going into foreclosure and also starting to file for bankruptcy. All because of bad financial decisions that they made when they were in college. All because of a real world financial understanding that no one taught them. Now granted, they never asked anybody, but that's because they didn't know that they had a problem as they were incurring it. To change a culture, you have to know the culture. To change this generation, you have to know the fears and motivations that drive them. You don't tell this generation no. You don't take away their identity by depriving them of the very things they've grown to value. You equip them. You relate to them. You educate them on how they can have all the things that they want. And you do this in an engaging and entertaining way. The very way they like to learn. This is what I do. I educate in an entertaining way. I gain retention through relativity. I empower them to make the right choices so they don't have to make the financial mistakes in college. I give them instant results by making the actions required of them easy. They don't have to learn the hard way. People ask, what's different about what you do? I tell them it's different because it works.